dear righteous, ladies and gentlemen, I'm so grateful and thankful for every single one of you for being here today. I'm deeply honored that we're able to hold this event here in the Royal Castle. Thank you to Professor Valkowski for hosting us here today. I'm honored to be here in Poland as a free man in an incredible democracy and stand here as a proud Jew, as was the tradition for over 1,000 years. To stand here today feeling safe and feeling good in Poland. I stand here also as the great grandson of David Rotter, a baker from the city of Dobrze nad Wisła here in Poland. And I stand here today with a bracelet on my arm with the number 85454, the number of Holocaust survivor Edward Mossberg. I also take this opportunity. I know that Edward's probably watching on Facebook live right now to send a speedy recovery and wish well to Edward Mossberg, who will hopefully be back here in Poland in a few weeks' time. People often ask me why I'm here in Poland. People may wonder why a 33-year-old British, Israeli, Polish Jew would bring together such important people, taking time from all of your busy and important schedules. The answer, my friends, is very simple. We Jews and Poles have an absolute duty never to forget. Of course, not to forget the six million Jews murdered by the German Nazis, nor the three million ethnic Poles, and millions of others. But for me, it's also important that we never forget the silent heroes. We never forget you, righteous amongst the nations. Three years ago, I visited a small town in Poland by the name of Ciepelów. As I entered the house, the first Jew to do so in over 70 years, I met a family in absolute shock. I entered the home of Marcin Skocilas. Marcin's great fat grandfather built a purpose-built bunker under the kitchen in his home and hid Jews inside. Sadly, the German Nazis were informed, and when they came, the Jews were long gone, and the entire Polish family remained. The Germans, as punishment for hiding these Jews, murdered the entire Polish family. Ten members of the Skocilas family murdered for attempting to save the life of a Jew. They attempted to save my brothers and sisters. What was I meant to say in a situation like that? How could I possibly show gratitude or thanks? All I could do was cry. As Marston lifted the floorboards in the kitchen to show me what we believed to be the only remaining purpose-built bunker in Poland, I entered and I cried even more. I thought of my two beautiful little daughters, Michali and Yaeli, and I thought of the Jews who were forced to live in such harsh conditions. But even more, I wondered how I could say thank you. I'm not a public servant. I hold no office. I'm just a young person motivated to do what I believe is right. I don't have all the answers, and until today, I'm still bothered by that fact. How can we say thank you? How do you thank someone for risking 
and sometimes giving their lives to save others. It's easy for us to listen and hear the stories of these incredible people and say, I would have done the same, or ask, why didn't more help? But the honest truth is, most of us wouldn't. I would not risk the lives of my children for anybody else. I wouldn't have been as brave as you. This and events like these are my small way of showing a level of gratitude. This, along with our project, the Silent Hero Taxi Project. You can see the picture behind you, this taxi that's traveling around Warsaw, offering rides and assistance and help to the righteous whenever we can. This is a small way of stepping up and saying thank you. This coming January, we're going to celebrate and commemorate 75 years since the liberation of Auschwitz-Birkenau and the other German Nazi death camps. And as is pretty evident, this is still a very difficult and painful part of our history for Poles and Jews. And we all must remember that. There was not a Jewish family, nor was there a Polish family that wasn't somehow impacted by the horrors of the German Nazis, by the tremendous terror of these times. Over the last year, we've seen and felt a lot of tension between our two nations. And the saddest thing is that this Nazi ideology is still dividing us today. The message and the stories of the silent heroes of the righteous amongst the nations bring a light into this dark and difficult history. They give us an example of how we can and should act and how we should move forward and how we should remember and how we should behave. So on behalf of all of us, I want to first of all thank every single one of the righteous for being here today, as is with all of my events, all the wonderful politicians sit in the second row. The first row is reserved for the righteous. So on behalf of all of us, thank you very, very much.